Okay, so here's one of the LED banks. Um, the way I set these LEDs up is I set them up to have the wiring going through the middle, and that's important because we have brackets that are going to mount out here. In case this will work. And these brackets are horseshoe shapes, so there's no way for the wiring to really go through them. It would have to come up and over them, it would be kind of messy. So I purposely oriented the LEDs to be uh, f have the wiring facing inward, so I could have both sets of wires coming out, and then they bend and go down the side in between the two light banks. So this is just chip one over here, and this is chip two over here, whatever way you want to think of it. And there's two of these banks, so this bank of one and two, there's another bank that looks identical to this, but it's the other direction. So this wire here would be on the other side. It would be on this side, and it faces this direction. Um, but when you connect these to the board, you need to put heat grease under them, obviously, so that the heat can dissipate from the back side of the chip here into the aluminum. Um, note that I used electrical tape right here. See this black electrical tape? This is covering up the terminals. So after I soldered the wire onto the terminals here on the actual LED chip, I put tape on them just to make sure they didn't accidentally uh, come in contact with this block. Because if they, if for some reason they get bent and they start contacting the uh, heat sink block, then you have a chance of a short. This is a spare one that I had. It's actually an ultraviolet, I believe, but we're not going to use ultraviolet in this printer. It's daylight, but the chip is the same. And this one, I can kind of show you guys how they're connected. Um, note that it says positive right here, and then it says negative on the right. So if you're looking down at your chip and you put it in the same orientation, positive on the left, negative on the right, um, I use the outside solder terminals. You can run the wires up through here, and then they would come down and solder right here, but it would be really difficult because this is a small spot to get into with an iron, and you'd probably end up melting the plastic here. So I chose to go with the outside terminals. Um, but it's kind of tricky when you're looking at this to figure out which one of these outside terminals is positive and negative, but a simple uh, circuit test, a resistance test with a tester, a voltmeter, uh, I was able to determine that this tab here on the bottom, so if you have it in the same orientation, this bottom tab is the positive, as you can see by the red wire, and the top tab would be the negative. So if you're looking at the same exact orientation, wire them up like this, this would be the outside of the of the heat sink block here, right? And then the wiring here would be coming together, and then it would go out the middle this direction, and it would be the exact same thing over on the other side, but mirrored. Um, this is a little bit more of a close-up. Um, after you get the, L the LEDs themselves mounted, uh, there's a separate set of screws for the lens. So the lens up here, these screws are, are separate from the mounting bolts, so these don't actually hold the LED on. All they do is hold the lens on. Um, and you need to take these uh, horseshoe-shaped brackets that you should have already 3D printed, and you're going to slide them underneath the lens right here and just put the lens bolts through them and they are dual purpose in this instance they hold the lens in place and they also hold the bracket and this bracket is going to hang the entire uh, uh, light bank I call it it's going to hold the bank midair um, underneath the screen so you can ignore this this is a blob of uh, putty that we use for something else so just ignore that and you can see my electrical tape is falling off here but skip here. This is the other side of the same bank. Uh, you can see it's basically the exact same setup mirrored. So this is the bottom of one of those banks. So you can see these brackets right here. This is the top of the bracket and then down here this is the bottom that curves the other direction. Um, and this part up here is where it's going to hang from, these little legs. And these are just our two 80 millimeter fans that come pre-mounted. Um, make sure all of these fans spin when you first power it on and test it. Make sure these fans are all spinning or you're going to have some problems down the road with overheating probably. Um, this is one of the, it's kind of out of focus here because it's in the background, but this is one of the lights set up in the back here. So this is the heat sink right here, the aluminum heat sink. The lights are up where you can't see them. And then this is the bottom of the fans right here setting down and then these are the main wires 
coming down here to that harness we went over earlier. This is our main uh, plug harness for the lights. Um, and obviously you're going to have two positive and two negative wires coming off of the LEDs because you have two LEDs on each bank. So you're just going to solder the two positives together right here. And the two negatives, you're going to solder them together. And then you're going to continue with one wire. So it's, you're going to basically combine the negatives and solder on a new single 16 gauge wire. And that, that wire becomes the negative that comes down here. So when you get to the plug, you're only going to have one positive and one negative, not two. Um, this is the fan harness. So you can see here kind of out of focus is the harness for the lights that we just talked about. This is all of the fan wires here coming through a little Velcro strap. And these are going to connect uh, right here. Remember that earlier I showed you we were looking down on the, um, the fan harness. This is all the plugs. Uh, the only thing I don't like about this harness is these plugs are the ones I was saying that are made for Arduino. They were very difficult to solder and I, I wouldn't recommend using them. I would actually recommend using those fan extension plugs that I mentioned over here. Um, use these plugs here, this, these, these little extension wires. Just clip these things in half or where, where, whatever length you want to clip them at. Um, you can just clip off the yellow wire because the yellow wire is a not necessary. We don't need it. All we need is the two power wires. So you can basically just clip off the yellow wire and throw it away. But just clip these extensions in half. Put the female side on the power harness itself, not the fan. Because these, these are much easier to get apart. Um, so your harness would look more like um, you would have those plugs here. Probably, I can't remember how many is in here. I think it's six or eight. It's a lot. <laughs> I believe it's six or eight plugs, yeah. Uh, and the only thing I think I forgot to go over here is that the two fans, uh, the heatsink fans, these these guys right here, um, you're going to combine these power cables as, as well. So you're just going to take the two positives, solder them together, put some heat shrink tubing over them, two negatives, solder them together, and then you're just going to take that 20 gauge wire, the real small fine wire, and connect those to the uh, paired up positive and negatives. So basically you're just reducing uh, your two positives into one cable and that way when you get down here, um, this is actually one of them right here. Uh, this one here, you can see the two positives next to each other and you can't see them because they're on the back but then I, there's, here's the two negatives here and then these combine right here where you see the, uh, where you see the heat shrink tubing this is where I soldered them together and they become one. Just basically a positive and a negative. So we took four wires and turned them into two wires and that way when we get down to the harness itself, here's, here's the plug itself that plugs in to the harness. All we have is a positive negative. Simple. Plug it into the harness. The fans have power. Because we don't need uh, more plugs so we just combined them to make it simpler. And here you can see we've gone ahead and connected the um, the set axis motor, uh, like we mentioned earlier, it's just put the plug facing forward. So this is the front of the printer over here. Do not put this on the back or you won't be able to get to it. And this is the relay that we talked about earlier. These wires right here are what's called, called the control circuit. Um, they aren't really positive negative wires, even though they're marked that way. They're basically just positive negative wires that control the relay. So when the power turns on, uh, this little LED right here will glow and that enables the power over here to flow. And when the power on this side, which is called the control side, when the control side, when this power on these wires right here turns off, then this circuit over here also turns off. And that's how you control the backlight turning on and off so you don't waste uh, wattage and generate extra heat. Um, and these control wires right here are going to connect uh, right here. So if you're looking down at the top, this is the uh, this is the Z stepper motor driver right here that we talked about earlier for the Z axis. And then right here, I can't read the number, it says fan something, but 
just look at the plugs and it's going to be the one you can see the, the next driver over here next to the z-axis uh, straight over from that driver is going to be where that that plug is connected right there and that's what's called a PWM fan so basically we can control that fan speed by using g-code in Arduino or software basically so that's how we send uh, a g-code command to this Arduino board and it it, the Arduino board thinks that it's turning the fan on and off, but in reality we're using these little wires as our control circuit for the relay, so that's how we're turning the relay on and off with, with the software control using G-code. So. Um, one of the last things you're going to do before you hook up the LCD and I'll show you how to do that in a minute but one of the last things you need to do here after you get everything else wired up you should have all of the end stops wired up at this point you should have all of the fans connected and wired up um, with long enough cables obviously and you should have all the voltage controllers all the LEDs everything should be connected at this point or at least wired to where you can connect it and plug it in but this box here is the cooling box or the diffuser box and this box is actually really important. Uh, it basically just catches any stray light that reflects off the back of the screen and bounces it back into the screen so you don't lose it. So it makes the printer more efficient. Um, and it also cools the bottom of the screen because not only does the screen generate a little bit of heat on its own, but these, these four lights here, one, two, three, and four, they're running roughly 20 watts each. So we're talking about on paper it's supposed to be 80 watts but in reality it's more like 100 watts uh, when they're on so they generate a fair amount of heat themselves and that heat rises straight up into the screen so we need a way to cool off the screen um, and every time you cure a layer on the screen that's up here when the resin cures the resin itself generates heat during the curing process so these fans here are going to be on the left side of the printer which would be over here and that's where our input fan is supplying cool air so the cool air is going to get pulled in by these fans um, note that these fans are pushing air inward right so they're pulling the cool air in and blowing it up into the screen and then these fans on the right side so this would be the right side of the printer these fans are flipped over and they're pushing air out so the air is going this way through the fan blades uh, and going out and you're just going to route these wires right here. Uh, these are the wires right here going out through the bottom. These little holes right here are already part of the 3D print, so they sh you shouldn't have to drill any holes. They're already there. Um, and obviously you can't feed these through with the plugs on them, so you would either put them through before you glue it together, or you could clip the plugs off, because we're going to have to clip them off anyway. So let's go on to the next one here. Um, this is the bottom side of that same setup so the fans are painted um, and they need to be painted white but the outside of them doesn't need to be painted so what you're going to do is you're going to put some uh, I think I use masking tape right here just put some masking tape on the two sides if you have to put a piece over here in the middle and just put some CA glue so basically your regular super glue that you could buy um, in this seam obviously from the inside not the outside and you're gonna put it all along the seam and that's gonna fuse these two parts together within probably five ten minutes easily then you can remove your tape um, take this outside and you are going to let's see if I have a picture here get rid of the writing you're just gonna spray paint it white so just take white primer or flat white you do not want glossy paint so just spray paint the whole thing white after you mount the fans in here um, and just spray from a distance you don't want too much paint on these fan blades because it'll make them off balance and they'll start vibrating really bad so just give it a couple light coats probably four light coats but spray from far away and let it just go on real even uh, if it doesn't cover perfectly just give it another light coat in about 10 minutes 20 minutes so the idea is to get the fan blades and the fans themselves all white um, as well as the box so that they reflect as much light as possible because if you don't paint these fans white you're going to end up with uh, less light intensity in this quadrant of the screen because 
you're getting more light reflected from this area and this area and this area over here on the side but since the fans are black they're going to kind of absorb the light so you will actually notice the difference in the prints um, so don't go too crazy with the paint but like I said a couple light coats and you'll keep keep it from getting out of balance uh, back up here and show you the wiring again real quick so after you've painted everything and you've put it in there um, here's the wires coming out the bottom if you wanted to you could come right here on the fan and literally just clip the yellow wire off because you don't need them all you need is the is the main red and black uh, positive negative wires I decided to leave them just lazy um, I just brought them all out paired them up here wrapped them up with some tape so they weren't too messy and they just come out the front so this would be when you put the printer all together this is obviously the bottom that we're looking at here not the top it's upside down right now but this would be coming towards this is coming out towards the front and right uh, towards the front of the printer and that makes this plus this plug here easy to access so you can this plug is going to go into the main uh, harness that we showed you the fan harness this plugs into that same exact harness so you can easily disconnect it and pop this out of the printer without getting all crazy and we just did the same thing here we just took a bunch of positives soldered them down to one took all the negatives soldered them down to one and then put heat shrink so we didn't have any shorts uh, that's pretty much it uh, I did put little pieces of double-sided tape here on the side almost like the corner of each window and what that tape does is it holds it in place because when you set it down on the LEDs these fans even if you even if you paint them perfectly they're still going to vibrate a little bit so you need something to absorb the vibration and the tape works perfectly for two purposes it absorbs the vibration that's present here in the frame because of the fans and it also keeps this thing from moving around so it won't slide around and end up in a different position after a couple hours of printing so just put a little piece um, kind of on each corner there's a piece back here and a piece right here and those will kind of keep it from moving around and absorb the vibration this is looking down from the top and that's pretty much it for the uh, the reflector box